Good morning everybody, Victor here. Now we're gonna start this video off right by doing a big old giveaway. Now we're gonna do two giveaways, one on YouTube, one on Instagram. You guys have two chances to win. I'm gonna be giving away an angle cooler. To enter the YouTube giveaway, all you guys have to do, go to anglecoolers.com, pick out the style you want. So this is a gray cooler and 80 quart. You guys can pick any cooler up to 80 quart, 50, 65, 80, whatever you want. Drop a comment below in this video saying, Vic, I want an 80 quart gray cooler that is your entry so in an upcoming video I'm gonna go ahead read the comments pick our winner at random and that is one way to enter the giveaway I'm gonna be doing another one on my Instagram at Landshark Outdoors you guys have two chances to win now let's roll with the video We're about to do an intro, and I guess that's the best way to do one. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Victor here. I'm with Elliot London, the owner of Bait Strips, right over there. What's going on, guys? And we are out here planer fishing, and literally, I don't know, maybe five minutes in, and we already have a dolphin on and potentially a water. two dolphin in the boat so far. Elliot's getting baits back out and it is very, it's actually not that windy, but it's kind of rough. So excuse the noise if there is a ton. So this is our rig that we just caught that dolphin on. It's a Mylar standard sea witch, a little split skirt, a little lead in it, two 007 hooks, and then a bait strip on the end. Which is this guy's invention right here. Elliot not only created it, but he owns the company. We got Brookie on with fish number three of the day. I just said something about a black fin. Maybe it's a little black fin. Heck I was yeah, just girl. saying, I was surprised that we hadn't caught a black fin yet. And look at that. Black. <laughs> Big thank you to Elliot for taking us out, bro. Awesome time out there. We had a great time. We didn't get the wall who we wanted, but I wanted to point this out. Elliot, I've been following his Instagram and dude, he kills it. I'm gonna insert a bunch of pictures and videos here, but your biggest wahoo? 65 pounds on the uh, beach trips right here. Which is his product, which I'm about to talk about, but we were fishing out of Hillsborough Inlet, which is Brook and I's home inlet and a really popular thing to do down here in South Florida is troll and in particular troll planers. Now most of the time when you guys have seen us troll planers it's with real bonita strips or that's probably what you're accustomed to. 
Now let Elliot tell you guys a little bit about what his company is and what bait strips are and how they're a good alternative to always have on the boat and a good alternative to real bait strips or real bonita strips. So these are our bait strips. They're artificial bonita strips. They're reflective on both sides. They're a mylar material. And one good thing about them is you can just have them on the boat whenever. You don't have to wait. Keep them in the freezer. You can just have them on the boat. They don't rot. You don't they have don't to rot, freeze no them. No smell. No scent at all, just shine. They're super durable, catch multiple fish on a strip, and they're since they're reflective, tuna, wahoo, dolphin, they all love them. Kingfish, I everything mean, eats these. We caught tuna and mahi on them today, and he's caught, I, just to like show you guys the proof in the pudding, I'll have the stuff on the screen here. He's caught multiple, multiple big wahoo on bait strips, and I think it's so cool. You're only 16. 16 years old, and he has his own company, his own lure company, which is incredible. So give the man a follow on Instagram and I'm gonna have his website. If you guys wanna pick up bait strips, I'll have them linked below. And they're honestly pretty inexpensive and it's, like he said, it's a good thing to have on the boat. Even if you guys are diehard bait fishermen, give these a try. You never know, it might change your mind. So with bait strips also, they don't wash out. There's no meat, you can troll them for as long as you want. If you don't get a bite on them that day after you fish them, you can put them back on the yo-yo fish them again next trip that's what's so good about them just keep reusing them and one last thing you also sell this this whole, this whole combo right here is for sale on our website it's a standard sea witch with a mylar underneath mylar flasher and double 70 hooks on 60 pound fluorocarbon this is mostly what i catch my wahoos on caught some dolphin today some tuna happy to help you out happy that you took us out fishing so we'll see you guys at the fillet table to clean these fish up. Check this out, guys. So when we were offshore with Elliot and Brooke, there were a ton of flying fish out there, and that is exactly what this little guy is. If you can see right here, that is its wing. Flying fish look like little mullet with wings. I'm sure you guys have probably seen them on the Discovery Channel or something like that, but that is like a dolphin's bread and butter food. And dolphin are usually full of stuff when you catch them. I just went ahead and cleaned this up for a Dexter how to fillet video. Got the black fin in the cooler, now let's clean that up. I know we get a lot of comments saying, show the fish in the canal and feeding them. Look at that. That's so many catfish going absolutely insane. Brooks Canal is infested with catfish. I just threw that dolphin carcass out there and they're ripping it to shreds. It makes me happy to see all the fish getting fed because you know, flying fish, we're consuming it. It's not going to waste, but you got to think the carcass, the head, the guts, it's a lot. It's food and you're putting it back into the ecosystem. So you might be feeding catfish, but it's all part of one big circle. So it's never really going to waste. And that's the cool thing is since Brooks family lives on the water, even their dinners, like Thanksgiving, these fish get so fat and fed because they're always, all these people that usually throw all their dinner and waste in the canal is good feeds the fish you know they don't throw their dinner in they throw scraps scraps, scraps. <laughs> they don't throw the turkey in the canal my i stand corrected <laughs> and whatever we don't eat and whatever we don't throw in the canal brooke's about to film a blue crab catch clean and cook which is going to be absolutely amazing because it's with her 89 year old grandma which is awesome and we're saving up you know, scraps like the belly meat and guts for her grandma for blue crabs. So it really all comes full circle, which is awesome. Look at them, they're like piranhas. I hope you can see them. Not very sunny. Brooke and I just ate snook all week. We're gonna go to the Keys Tuesday and hopefully get on some wahoo. So safe to say we have a ton of fish. I'm gonna give that dolphin to my dad because he hasn't had a lot of fish since I moved out. But we're just going to take off one side of this black fin. Going to go around the peck fin, around the head. And we're just going to knock off the top loin of this guy. And we're going to make tuna poke, which is one of my favorite things to make. And I love, love, love eating tuna raw. My favorite way. And sushi style as well. And down the backbone, right here on the other side of the bloodline. There we go, look at that. Beautiful tuna loin, black fin. That's the part we're gonna eat for, well, I'm gonna make the whole thing poke style, but very simple, basic way to clean a tuna. And check this out. Never have I ever found baby squid in any fish's stomach 
and this tuna was full. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then there was actually even more that we already threw in a bag for Brooke's grandma. But that's so cool. Look at that, that doesn't that look like a little eel or something? Or is that a baby squid too? That's not a, a squid. Like a little fish. I don't know what it is. Man, this, this little tuna was slap full of food. So that's what we're working with. Those are the four tuna loins. And you know, this will make lunch and dinner for someone like me and Brooke or me and my dad. We're gonna go ahead, save the carcass for Brooke's grandma. Now I'll actually see you in the kitchen. Here's what we're working with guys. For poke, you can get as creative as you guys want. I'm gonna show you how to make the marinade next the way I like to do it, but when you're doing poke, if you guys like little chunks, go ahead and make little chunks. These are about the size of the chunks I like for my poke bowl. And the trick is you want all of your chunks to be roughly the same size. So I didn't really have a big tuna to work with. You know you get a big yellowfin or a big blackfin. You can make a perfect rectangle, a perfect chunk to make uniform chunks but I had a lot of scrap when it came to this tuna, which I'll do something else with. But, for example, you make your size like that, a nice rectangle, try to make it uniform, and then I cut it down the length of the fish. So like that, now we got two pieces, and then we're gonna make our cubes, just like this. First off, soy sauce. You gotta have that for, okay. And this is all eyeballing based on the amount of fish I have. So soy sauce. Now we need some oil in there, sesame oil. Very fragrant. Probably do one, a bit less than a tablespoon. Didn't have any fresh ginger, so we have some ginger paste. Now this is one scallion. I guess a stock, is that what you call it? A stock, scallion stock? Maybe. <laughs> I was just thinking a scallion stick. <laughs> that works, scallion stick. It's definitely not a stick though. <laughs> um, if you guys like heat, sriracha, chili paste, cayenne, peppers, red peppers, whatever you want. We'll do a little bit of sriracha, because I like it hot. Oh yeah, we need some sesame seeds in there. And we're not going to keep it boring. We're going to do some white sesame seeds and some black sesame seeds because I think that contrasting colors look good. Are you filming me? Yeah, that's good. It's very good. Um, we're going to add some stuff later, like mirin, which is acidic. I'm not going to add that now. Since this is my kitchen cook, I'm gonna do my rules and I'm gonna add about that much honey. I'm gonna thicken it up as well as make it a little bit sweet. And Brooke says she'll lick the spoon when I'm done. Mmm, I like the sweetness. Try it. I think the sweetness definitely does it justice. Mmm. That was the fakest mmm I ever heard. Do you actually mm. like it? Bro. Good. Okay, so now what we do. You guys want to try? Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Okay, now we add our fish. And you might be thinking, Vic, why is there so much liquid? Well, you're going to serve this over rice. You still have to mix in cucumbers, tomatoes. So it might look like a lot now, but I'm telling you, it's not going to be. Okay, so we're going to let this sit. And you're gonna see, after about an hour, it's gonna take on a little bit of a different color, glisten, it kinda cures the fish, and it just makes it a lot better tasting. All right guys, so we're gonna make our poke bowl. Dad's holding the camera, poke bowl. I just have some instant rice, because I got lazy. And you put a little rice in your bowl. There's the tuna after it's been marinating for about an hour and a half. And take a good scoop of this. Put it on top of our rice. 
Here are our veggies that I cut up. We have some wild tomatoes, cucumbers in there. We're gonna put that on our bowl too. I have some fresh scallion aside from the scallion that I put in our marinade. Put a little fresh scallion on there. And we also have macadamia nuts. And like I said, guys, you can get as creative as you want. Whatever you want, it's your show. So I'm doing some macadamia nuts. This is the leftover tuna. So the scraps, like I sh showed you guys, I had those good cue pieces. These are the kind of scrap pieces. What I did with it, I mushed it up and I made it into spicy tuna. I mixed it with mayo and spicy tuna. So put a little bit of that in there. And now, shout out to Elliot. He's the one who turned me on to this stuff and it is delicious. It's kind of like the French's fried onions that you'd put in a green bean casserole. We need to add a little bit of crunch to this as well. Put some of that in there. And we're gonna finish it off with some sesame seeds. Okay, that's what we do, like something like that. So now my dad's gonna make his bowl. He's got tuna, some rice. Yeah, you need the rice. Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben's. Ben's. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mix all of mine together. And all those flavors combined, you get all the different textures. You have the fruit, or not the fruit, the vegetables, the spiciness, the crunch from the onions. And a lot of people, instead of using rice, they'll use salad or they'll just make a salad out of it. Cucumber and tomato. It's whatever you want. Mmm. Good. Good? Very good. You like all the flavors together? Yeah. Yeah? I heard olive. All flavors. Yeah, good, very good. Check this out. You get a little bit of tuna, scallion, the rice, cucumber in there. Colorful dish, actually really healthy and super delicious. Tuna, by far, my favorite way to eat is raw. Tuna dries out a lot when you cook it, unless you sear it and you leave the raw middle. Nothing beats. I think the best way to cook tuna is to not cook it at all. That's what mine looks like. A little spicy, but perfect spicy. Good. Not too much spicy. So it's been a long time since you guys have seen the kitchen cook in this house. I, since Brooke and I moved out, we don't see my dad that often. We live a lot closer to Brooke's parents, so it's always nice when I can have a meal with him. And I brought him some fresh dolphin. You're gonna cook that up this week? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, thank you. You will. He's a big fish eater now, so I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy lunch with my dad. And thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget about that angle giveaway. Like I said, all you have to do to enter, comment below what cooler size you want and the color in the comment section below, anything up to an 80 quart. And that's all the time I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.